Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 24 of our PDD video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about running spec flow scenarios based on tags via an unit 3.0 command line. So this is a complete continuation of part 23. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 23 since we are going to use some of the code base from that part. All right, so let's get started. Spec flow tags. We have already discussed about spec flow tags in our video series, but executing spec flow scenario based on spec flow tags in any command line is tricky because we have not seen anywhere in our video series so far to run spec flow scenarios on any unit command line based on tags at least. But this is very very handy and I have requests from many people saying how to run the test on any unit command line based on the tags. So this video is for you guys. So before diving deep into the specflow tags, let's first understand what's happening while you create a tag in specflow scenario under the hood. So it's going to look something like this in the code behind of the specflow feature file. So in the specflow feature file, you have something called as nunit.framework.category attribute. And this category attribute class is responsible for holding all your tags. Can be a test tag or a smoke test or regression test or maybe low impact test or high impact test, something like that. So you can give any type of tags, right? So those tags in feature files code behind will look something like this. And this category attribute is something which is very, very important. In NUnit 2.x and below, they had a parameter called include, which can be used to specify different tag attribute for specflow 2.8 and above. But earlier version of specflow will not work because they have some kind of incompatibility issues and there is a bug being raised as well. So this include parameter is currently missing in NUnit 3.0. So how to run this category attribute then? In NUnit console runner, if you just go there and if you try to search for the help, you will see a documentation for the help out there, something like this. And here, the one thing which is very, very interesting is the where option. So the where option says that the option is intended to extend or replace the earlier test include and exclude option by use of a selection expression describing exactly what test to use. Examples of usage are where colon cat is equal to is equal to data. Where method is equal to matching or, or kind of contains the tilde symbol is actually saying contains data test star slash. So you can also use some kind of regular expression. The cat is what is called as a category attribute in our case. So you can actually specify the category as well. That's the great news. So we are going to perform the same kind of operation right now and see how things work. So let's quickly see this in action. So for that, I'm going to jump into Visual Studio. So this is the same project which we have been working so long in our video series. And if you're wondering where this complete code base is available, of course, this code base is available currently in the GitHub of Exit Automation. You can go to the github.com slash exit automation and then you can search for specflow parallel test repository and you can download this particular piece of code that you are seeing right here. But the whole intention for this particular video is to see how we can run the test using tags. So as of now, we have only one tag here, like smoke. And if you go over here, we have something like my tag completely irrelevant so maybe I can even change this to smoke test and if I want to run this test via tags with say smoke then you don't really have to specify the smoke as well because there are two tests or two scenarios with the same tag names so even if you run the test it will automatically run both the tests but what if I want to specify exactly which tag I need to execute for example test tag something like that and let's say if I want to execute this via command line, it's very, very simple as we saw on the slide. So let's quickly see how the code looks like in code behind of this login feature.cs. And if you just expand this code and if you come down a little bit, you can see there is something called as nunit.framework.category attribute of test tag in here. And this category attribute, as I already said, is responsible for executing or holding your test tag. So while executing, you can just specify where colon cat is equal to what. So I'm going to do that right now. So first of all, you need to have the nunit console runner downloaded in your project. 
So you can e either do that using the add reference by going to the manage NuGet package and you can search for init console as we have already right now. So you can even directly go to the project, right click this project and go to the open file in Explorer and then go to what is called as packages and here you have something called as in init console runner right so you can go right here in init console runner 3.4.1 and here you can just execute the test so what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to open a command line over here and the DLL file which is holding our test is going to be sitting in the bin folder right so I'm going to go to the bin folder and this is the DLL file responsible for holding all my test so I'm just going to copy this path and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to specify in init console dot exe oops and then I'm going to paste the path of the DLL file and then I need to specify the category and now I'm going to introduce our ver parameter and here I need to specify the category so let's say I'm going to specify the category as cat is equal to and I don't know what category I need to execute. Let's say I'm just choosing something else. And then if I hit enter, you can see that it is searching for that category. And it says that for the particular category, there is no test to be executed. So count is equal to zero, pass zero, fail zero, everything's okay. But now if I specify the exact category that we are gonna execute. So the category we are gonna execute is going to be the test tag, right? So I'm just gonna choose that and I'm gonna paste it over here. And now if I execute, this time it should open the browser and then it should perform the internet operation, which is nothing but opening the application and then logging in. There we go. So it performed the operation and the test got passed. And you can see that right now it is executing the test based on a specified tag. So that's the power of NUnit to specify the exact tag using the category option. So in specflow, there is nothing called category, but in any unit, there is something called as category attribute. And we have to manage both of them and execute that using this particular trick, right? So that's it guys. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.